Where are we headed, babe? We are going to see our solar arch for the first time. The first time! Oh, Yay. I'm so excited! <laughs> oh, for me? Thank you. <laughs> Chris and Steve in the metal shop knew how excited we were to see the arch. But to call it an arch at this stage was optimistic. The metal had started to come in, and Chris was doing a lot of prep work, also known as polishing. But we could start to see the vision. This is set up that goes in between the two panels. Okay. One of these will be like that. Uh huh. So I can envision it. Like this. Uh huh. Cool. Chris had also done some initial welding on the round tubing that would serve as the outer frame. Seeing it for the first time, only one word came to mind. That's going to be big. Yeah. It's going to be big. The yard has begun to work on the new solar arch, which is super exciting. But it also means I need to clear off the old solar panels from the coach roof. So I'm up here, let's talk about kind of what the plan is for those. We've got three of them back here now. One, two, three. And that there is our old Wi-Fi extender. Let me get rid of that as well. So we're going to be keeping two of these panels. This one, if I come in close here, uh, it was damaged from something falling off the mast. So this one just has, uh, just hasn't performed very well, so not really worth trying to keep that. Now, this middle one, this is where it gets a little bit tricky. So the wires, you can see, come into the traveler, come here, around kind of the, the end of the traveler, and then down into the cockpit and up into the boat. So the wire from this one is longer and comes all the way around there, which means I'm going to use this panel and put it up here on the hard top because the wire will be long enough to run from there all the way up to the front and I'll take you up there in a minute and show you where those connections are going to be made. So back to this panel, this one right here, I'm going to move here, uh, forward of the Traveler. Now, that is going to be underneath the boom, uh, normally when we're sailing and stuff like that. So it's not the ideal spot, there'll be a bit more shade, but I've got the solar panel, why not keep it? So because that uh, electrical cable coming off of that panel is shorter, I'm going to have to get a little tricky. We're going to use the longer cable that runs all the way to this one, and we'll use the wires from that panel and then the panel back there and redo the wiring down the cell controllers. So it's gonna be a little bit complicated, but I think I've got it all worked out. I'm gonna start up here with the starboard most solar panel. So I wanna disconnect that and make sure that it's gonna be, the wiring's gonna be long enough to be able to be used. Uh, and I've got the panel covered because it is a sunny day today. Don't want uh, power coming out of the panel as I disconnect it. The wire is cut and I put a little bit of heat shrink on one end just so there's no live wires out there. And now I'm gonna pull that side through the traveler. The big question was, this is the wire that we just cut. Is it going to stretch far enough along the traveler that we'll be able to use this end and splice in another solar panel. I'm happy to say it will. With proof that my plans could actually work, I felt a lot more confident starting to cut the remaining wires and moving things around. Gonna move down in the cockpit for some shade for this next little part. I've got the the panel down here with me, and I gotta say, for an eight-year-old panel, like it looks pretty darn good. The I cleaned up just the backside a little bit. There's a bunch of dirt and stuff up on the coach roof where it was sitting on top of. But down here, let me let me bring you in and show you. There's a few spots on the corners, like I was saying, saying just a little extra sealant and stuff left. 
So let's get that all cleaned up and then we can go mount it in the new spot. Everything's all cleaned up and I'm pretty much ready to drill the new holes for holding this down. I just operate under so much extra caution. Probably this is what takes me like twice as long to do projects as someone who's a professional at this. But uh, let me show you what I've done real quick. We have measured exactly five millimeters from solar panel to edge, matches up the panel there. Uh, we are using some blue painter's tape to prevent the gel coat and fiberglass from cracking. And I have carefully marked with a marker exactly where each screw hole is going to go. So now I've got the drill back here and I have kind of measured out the depth of the screw that I need and put in some painter's tape on the drill bit so that I don't go too deep and into the cockpit. All that preparation does take a lot of time, but I feel it's well worth it to take the time to do a quality job. After all, no one cares more about Starry Horizons than we do. Now the main holes are drilled, I also find it very helpful to actually use a countersink bit and kind of countersink the holes. I've been told that helps prevent the gel coat from cracking further on in the future. And it gives a nice little base for some uh, additional sealant to get in there. Just make sure we get a nice tight seal, no water leaking down into the fiberglass or the core. It may take a while, but all that effort does result in a nice clean hole. And now we've got some 3M 4000 UV Fast Cure. I'm just gonna dab a little bit kind of in each hole. That way when we screw it down, we get a nice seal. Getting the right amount of sealant without making a mess is an art form I'm still working on. But at least this time, I contained my mess underneath where the panel was going. To get the panel to line up with the drilled holes, I'd pre-screwed the screws just enough so the tips were extruding from the panel. That helped me visually line things up, and then I could feel when things sat just right. I'm at the point I have to figure out how to get the wire from the solar panel into the Traveler. This is going to be a little bit trickier than what we've done previously, because before we'd been able to just drill straight into the Traveler. But because I'm having to do some splicing of the wires together, I need a slightly bigger hole, which means we're going to go ahead and use one of these. These are the scan strut kind of cable seals. So I'm going to have to drill a big hole. That is, uh, let's see, 7 eighths inch, 28, 22 mil, uh, into the aluminum traveler. So that is not going to be a whole lot of fun. I do have some cutting fluid. So we'll be using that, trying to keep the bit cool, actually make some progress in it. So this part, this is gonna be my least favorite part of the project, but we will get it done. 1500 RPMs is the optimum speed for this hole saw into aluminum. But it was also a windy day, and I was trying not to make a massive mess. So it was slow and steady, with lots of breaks to prevent metal shavings from flying away. And there we go all drilled. That wasn't too bad, so uh, it's always better when it's easier than I'm expecting. It rarely ever happens. So now I'm going to need to fish something through here all the way down to the end of the traveler so that we can then pull this cable all the way back here. So that's what's up next. This straight run with large holes and an even bigger for lack of a better word, conduit is by far the easiest wire chase I've ever done on Starry Horizons. I had to enjoy the moment while it lasted, because I knew the rest of the wire runs would be much more troublesome. I am just about ready to start splicing wires, which feels good, but we've got to get this scan strut cable clamp thing in place first, because it needs to go in place before the wires are joined. So we've got kind of three components here. We've got a foam base. I have already drilled out all the holes that that will uh, fit around. Then we've got the solid base. We'll screw that down. And then this will go, the top part will go over the wire. And then once the wires are spliced together, we can screw everything down. The scan strut cable seal is a really neat setup that gives a nice grip on the wire and is 100% waterproof. 
My main concern here was screwing into the aluminum with a stainless screw, so I made sure to use some Lanacoat. These Solara panels have bypass diodes, and thus have three wires coming out of each panel. It was a simple process to match up the three wires by color, since I was splicing into the factory wiring of the panel I would be removing. Once again, this is where my obsessive project planning really paid off. The wiring is done. So I'm gonna dig, go inside, double check, make sure everything is actually producing some power. There is, there's definitely some shade on this panel, and this panel was taking the regulator, the controller, from that panel. So this is now panel one, that's panel two, and that one there should be four. So let's go in and check and see how they're producing. This is kind of an exciting moment coming in here, seeing if I did the project correctly. So I'm gonna turn around, let's take a look at our Victron control screen. Regular to one, outputting 11 watts. Regular to two, 34 watts. What was regular to three is no longer plugged in anything, and regular to four, producing at 29 watts. I'd say we got it. We've got two last things to do up here. First is we need to get the bigger heat shrink up over all the splice connections. And then second, you gotta actually put the, the scan strut together. So take that down, screw it down. Uh, this is kind of the rubber piece that clamps around the wire. Put that all together, and then I can start on the other panels. Since this wiring would be living in the fairly harsh environment of the Traveler, I wanted to give the splices as much protection as possible. Once again, it's the fine details that take the most time. But I was super pleased with how everything ended up, and I took advantage of a bit more sunlight to remove the solar panel we'd be throwing away and getting rid of the old Wi-Fi extender. It is time for day two of the Moving the Solar project, and I'm very proud. I've got the two panels in place there, which means there's just one panel left after the Traveler, and that's the one it's going up here on the hard top. So we're gonna go ahead and get that done. It's gonna be mostly the same process as yesterday. So I think we're just gonna cue the montage. the wire for the solar panel run through the hard top here at the helm. It is pulled out down there. I had to get a, a line fished through so that I could then kind of tie the wire to it and then pull that forward. Not too bad. However, it's getting exceedingly windy out here. In fact, the camera's fallen over a few times, so you're just gonna have to assume that I have successfully spliced in the wire and done the cable seal installation all correctly. Let's move on to the next part of the project.